Medial approach to the metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe. A brief video. Indications. Horlux valgus. Horlux rigidus. Positioning. And. Incision. The patient is placed in the supine position. After draping, the lower leg is placed on a cushion. A skin incision approximately 6 cm in length is made medially over the metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe, or somewhat more posteriorly, and then curves along the contour of the joint, figure. If necessary, metatarsal osteotomy, the skin incision may be extended proximally. If a McBride operation is planned, a second incision, approximately 3 cm long, is made in the first interdigital space. The skin and the subcutaneous tissue are dissected while sparing the plantar and dorsal nerves. The joint capsule is opened parallel to the skin incision figure. After splitting of the skin and subcutaneous tissue, the joint capsule is incised parallel to the skin incision. Preservation of the dorsal cutaneous nerve, branch of the saphenous or medial. Exposure of the joint. For clear exposure of the metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe, the joint capsule has to be subperiosteally detached, distal to the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe and proximally behind the head of the first metatarsal bone. Subsequently, two Hohmann retractors are inserted, figure. Appearance after opening of the metatarsophalangeal joint capsule of the great toe and insertion of small Hohmann elevators. Exposure of the tendon of adductor hallucis. If tenotomy or displacement of the tendon of the adductor muscle is required, a short skin incision is made in the first intermetatarsal space. Care should be taken not to make the skin bridge between the two skin incisions too narrow. After the subcutaneous tissue and fascia have been split, the tendon of the muscle is exposed and stripped off the joint capsule and the lateral head of flexor hallucis brevis figure. The tendon is snared with a holding suture. If necessary, the capsule of the first metatarsophalangeal joint may, in addition, be incised transversely. Following incision of the first interosseous space, a self-retaining spreader is placed between the first and second metatarsal heads. The great toe and second to fourth toes are also spread. The tendon of adductor hallucis is isolated from the metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe. Exposure of the tendon of adductor hallucis. If tenotomy or displacement of the tendon of the adductor muscle is required, a short skin incision is made in the first intermetatarsal space. Care should be taken not to make the skin bridge between the two skin incisions too narrow. After the subcutaneous tissue and fascia have been split, the tendon of the muscle is exposed and stripped off the joint capsule and the lateral head of flexor hallucis brevis figure. The tendon is snared with a holding suture. If necessary, the capsule of the first metatarsophalangeal joint may, in addition, be incised transversely, figure. Snaring of the tendon of adductor hallucis with a holding suture. Lateral capsulotomy of first metatarsophalangeal joint. Wound closure. The wound closure is affected in two layers by suture of the joint capsule and skin. Note. For clear exposure of the first interdigital space, the insertion of a sturdy self-retaining spreader between the first and second metatarsals, as well as manual retraction of the great toe and the other four toes with gauze strips, is recommended. Figures. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.